What is this part for? I have a thing with Ricada. Do I want to mention this? Do I want to talk about Ricada? Sure. Let's talk about Ricada. All right. Alyssa Clips, begin here. Like, they'll have to change it on their own. Right. So what do you say to people who, who are like, Nick's changed. His content's changed. Like they've already they formed that opinion about you. Well, what got them to that opinion? Why do people say, "Well, Nick Nick Ricade is not what he used to be"? Uh, uh, the, well, they're probably right. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what do you, what do you what do you say to the to the you've changed things? Like, well, I I mean, I guess it's your perspective on what it is. Do I talk about comics and anime as much? No, way less. I'm not covering any cases in those uh, areas. So certainly that is true. Oh. News hamster, you snuck, you snuck up on me. Get out of here, sneaky, sneaky little mouse. Um, the subject matter I've covered has changed. If you found me by watching me cover live trials, uh, when I'm covering Rittenhouse and Johnny Depp, I'm I'm putting in um, between twelve and seventeen hours a day, five days a week for weeks and weeks at a time. I can't do that most of the time. Um, even when I would like to, and and usually if there is a trial that it has sufficient level of popularity, it would be very profitable personally for me to do that. But I just can't, man. I got five kids. I got a wife. Uh, we have tons of family obligations and events that we go to. Uh, I teach at our homeschool co-op. He's had five kids for a while, though. Like when he did all those other trials, he had five kids. I think the issue that he has now is that he simply is unable to remain sober for the duration of those streams and they are so profitable like to the like to the tone of like six figures that it's nuts to not do them unless you literally just cannot because you can hire people to cover you you can find people to cover you at your micro school thing you can find someone to babysit but i mean his kids are older now so they they really need less chaperoning than ever before I don't buy the whole, <clears throat> I, I'm just so, so busy that I can't do anything. Cause it's like, at this point in your life, you should definitely be more situated and you should have these routines figured out enough that you can actually take care of business. But I don't know. I mean, it, it's like, I think that him not covering trials is also like one of the least interesting changes that he's done. Like it's just a cost loss opportunity for him to, to miss those things however i wouldn't even say that's like probably for his like his actual mega fans that's, that's probably a high complaint that they have but for like everybody else just watching him from the sidelines it's like that's a that's a minor footnote it's like that's like a symptom of a of a broader problem as opposed to the problem in and of itself uh all of those things get pushed to the side when there's a trial so for me like if that's what you found me doing where where i'm spending what uh, 80 hours a week streaming well and then you come in you're like why is he only why is he only doing four shows this week well, it's like, because because i don't want to kill myself right. yet uh and i don't want to start wanting to kill myself either um so maybe i've changed in that way and then there there's this other aspect where um people impose upon me a set of values because i am married i've been married for 19 years uh and that uh, my wife and I are are like like that's it. We don't have prior uh, major relationships really. Um, we have five children. We homeschool them, and we're we're Christian. Uh, people decided then that that meant we were a specific brand of Christianity, um, and then they you know they will identify various uh, opinions I've had on certain things and say they are definitely this. And then uh, if you violate that image. Um, you're guilty of some sort of hypocrisy. Whether or not you actually possess that opinion, um, people decided that you did. And so then, but again, what do you do? Like, I, I remember when Nick Riccata did like a a 30 minute long diatribe about how anyone watching Cuties was like a pedophile and it was an indefensible abuse of children and how it deserved to be prosecuted under the Texas child pornography statutes. 
And then I remember how a couple of years later, when Dick Masterson and Vito Gasaldi were talking about cuties and defending it as artistic expression, he completely 180 and said that actually it wasn't uh, child pornography. It was actually uh, pushing the boundaries on freedom of speech. Remember how he completely and totally changed his entire tune on this thing that he was very, uh, very fiery and passionate about at the time that it happened? To the complete and total opposite of it only because of the circumstances around him and also changed um so that's why people call him a hypocrite it's not that he is not christian enough for them um that's a very lawyerly answer i want to point out by the way this guy has a very pretty boy pit face and i don't like it i don't like this other guy's face at all i don't know who I, i've seen him before i think he interviewed um DSP and maybe some other person that I've talked about and I think I even mentioned then that I don't like his face However, I really need to Reiterate that I, I hate his face. Okay um, I'll just continue like Apparently he gets into specifics again, about do, stories like, about him Change it uh, and then the the worst part about that is when people take uh, a story or a concept and then they add information to it for whatever reason they create a fiction based on a reality and then they've determined that that fiction is grounds for you having violated something else there's a there's a whole bunch of funny stuff about me that is just wildly untrue and people say that that is the source of the hypocrisy uh, of me betraying some values it's like but guys like that's not it didn't actually happen well so <laughs> what are some of those things that people say about you that are that are untrue well, apparently, uh, I am a swinger, I guess. Um, and I, they don't mean with like a golf club. Uh, I guess that means that I uh, go out and sleep around consensually outside of my marriage, which is not oh. true at all. Uh, how, do they, how do they get that? Where did, the, where did that come from? <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, while I'm not a swinger, uh, I have done a bunch of hilarious stuff in my life, um, uh, fun fun things in my opinion that do actually kind of push the boundaries of what people are comfortable with. Um, like when I, for example, when I go out to a bar or a club, uh, I will buy drinks for numerous people. Like I'm I'm out having fun. I'll buy a bunch Is of he drinks just for people. No, I'll often just if it, okay. So for for clarity's sake, the reason why people say that. Rikeda is into swinging is that a while back I think over a year ago I think it, it just came up on the anniversary of a year ago Rikeda took a trip to Jamaica with his wife and he went to a club called Hedonism 2 and Hedonism 2 had interracial cuckolding events and stuff it was like a, a sexual um, it was for, for adults who probably like middle aged adults mostly and older people who wanted to spice up their sex life and shit and do swinging and do interracial play and stuff like that. And he went there, he streamed from his hotel room and people were able to verify that he was streaming from the hotel room at in Jamaica at the time of this event during the period where they also had the interracial stuff. And so it became, especially because of his relationship with Drexel and also the fact that Kayla talked on stream about going to a mas masseuse who would massage her breasts. And she went to this guy like two or three times. Um, <clears throat> it, it became like a thing that he was a swinger. So if he's going to sit there and say, people say I'm a swinger because I buy ladies drinks at the bar when me and my wife go out to drink sometimes. That's like a deliberate misrepresentation and lie. Just walk away uh, or I'll talk to them. And sometimes that involves um, meeting people who try to pick you up and take you home. Oh. And I don't go home with anybody other than my wife because, well, we're, we're monogamous like, and we always have been. But uh, that leads people to the idea that maybe we're not. Or something. Oh, is he really is is he really just going to not talk about hedonism at all? We know for a fact that he went to that hotel. I, I want to say he even talked about it to me, and he had just said that oh, well we went to this thing. I think what what it was it was an he said that he went to the exhibitionism event, 
where like you have sex with your wife while other people are having sex with their wives like in a room and it's like an exhibitionist thing or you like sit around naked drinking like in a in a public setting at this hotel together with other people who are also naked and uh it was just like the the interracial stuff was like next week or something and it wasn't the week he was there i thought that was his his line because i'm pretty sure that's what he told me i don't know if that's like a public thing that he stated if this is new information to people and he only told me that in private um <clears throat> i could be misremembering but i'm pretty sure that's what he said to me or uh i have i have talked about attending uh, a nude beach for example and i think it's actually uh, an activity that a lot of people would benefit from when you find out how unsexual it is. Uh, but because of that, people start to draw conclusions about what goes on at those places. And, and it's like, guys, I'm sharing a fun story with you that was so far out of my comfort zone. But then I, I realized that, you know, that it's really interesting what being around a bunch of other naked people is when it's all consensual because you realize that like maybe your body dysmorphia issues or, or your insecurities about yourself can vanish in the wake of everyone's averageness. Well, I'll, I'll and, say this, having, I went to Jamaica and right next to where we stayed, there was a nude beach. And oh, yeah. if, if you want to feel good about yourself, you just look over at that nude beach and realize how good you truly have it. No matter how bad you think you look, you just look over there and go like, no, you know what? Not that bad. <laughs> and that's, that was honestly a big portion of the story was that exact sentiment. It's like, you're there and you look around and you're like, well, all these people are fat and ugly. Like they seem happy. What am I worried about? And it was, it was amazingly comforting, like without a hint of irony, it was amazingly comforting to go through that. And I think a lot of people, when you see people discussing uh, relationships and, and male female dynamics online, you get these wild caricatures of, of things. And you know that the people behind the scene, the behind the screen watching are not, fitting into these uh caricatures because they're not even real they're not real for the i think that's only accurate when it comes to like i i think that uh people need to be more like actively cognizant of the fact that when you see stuff online it's almost always fake like in a sense everything that you see is fake like when you see an image or a video you're not actually witnessing what was recorded you're witnessing a specific angle and uh a specific like perspective on that thing so in, in a very metaphysical sense you, you never everything that you see is fake however w w like for instance with like finster like i, I mentioned that he uh does angles and shit Where's Fenster? It's important to realize that, like, this guy, he, everything that he does on his stream is geared towards making him look as feminine as possible. He's got a downward angle. Um, he has uh, makeup lighting behind the camera. He has everything geared towards making him look a specific way. So when you see him, uh, you, you must realize that it's fake but everyone does this everyone who has like an online persona is like putting out like a fake version of themselves um especially people who rely on attractiveness in order to make money they're always lying the most and with filters and stuff they they can lie extremely easy and convincingly um especially the people who aren't really thinking about what they're looking at so in a way that's true however i would say that you don't need to go to a nude beach and, and walk around with your, your dongus out showing off your naked wife to a bunch of black people in Jamaica uh, in order to accomplish, to, to realize what I realized by just thinking about it. People talking, they're not real for the examples given. Um, and, and so you know the person there is statistically average, right? Like that that's the obvious assumption. And you're like, well, you you don't need to look at the dynamics of relationships through the lens of celebrity. You don't need to look at the dynamics of relationships through the lens of Instagram models. Cause that's not reality. Um, the reality is you. And if you go out and find people engaged in 
uh, all levels of relationship. <laughs> Someone asked this, Josh. What are you saying? Are you are your eyes really not that far apart in real life? It's all camera angles. I have never had anyone comment that my eyes are far apart. It's it literally is just some camera angles are really bad. However, I will say this, and this is funny. Um, I got uh, fitted for glasses at some point, and I went to the ophthalmologist, right? And he's uh, taking measurements of my face to, to give me glasses. And he actually commented, he's like, wow, that can't be right. And then put the thing back on my head and measured again and said, your eyes are really far apart. So, yes, they are very far apart. However, certain camera angles make them look like disfigured in how far apart they are when uh, it's not so bad, I promise. Relationship from the one night stand to the literal sex on the beach to the long term marriage. And you, you look around and you're like, no, these people are actually just really similar to me on balance. I'm telling you, it is it is a massive change in your confidence and your perspective on those dynamics. And and I think putting us all behind screens and, and putting these uh, arbiters of of male and female realities, people like Pearl or Fresh and Fit or, uh, you know, the whatever podcast, <laughs> they're, they're defining male and female dynamics for a huge audience. And you're like, but they're picking up ludicrous examples that don't reflect reality at all. But then people are soaking it up as if they do. And that to me is is wild. And it, it's literally go out and touch grass, except in this case, the grass is sand uh, and it's covered in stinky people. Like, go, <laughs> go do it. It's funny. Well, uh, but I mean, yeah. It's true that you shouldn't listen to thoughts and read towards like Andrew Tate for like relationship advice. However, his advice is also stupid. It's true. There's a, again, on the I think, there's a, a video that we came about from 8chan and it was from uh, the users of Intel and they were making fun of me uh, but there is a line in that the video that makes me laugh every time I think about it and uh, it's like a, a female like Microsoft Sam voice saying the line wow and his eyes are so far apart it's no wonder he's such a visionary <laughs> and anytime anyone mentions how far apart my eyes are I just think it's because I'm a visionary <laughs> <laughs> talking about uh things people say about you online that are not true and and, and, and for the record when you say you go yeah. out to clubs with your family these are not swingers clubs right just need to be very clear yeah, yeah just like a dance club in a city <laughs> or or a a bar like it, they're just they're just places where people go that's it so that may that may or may not have swingers at them well i mean i i gotta tell you the funny thing about um you know, rumors about that sort thing of, about uh, life uh, is you start to meet people who are in that live. Like they reach out to you or they'll they'll come out to you or whatever. Not in a gross way, right? Not in like a, hey, <laughs> not that way. But like, they're just like, hey, uh, like, are you involved in this? Like, because I can tell you about it. And you know how it goes. Like when you talk about video games, surprising people reach out to you to talk to you about video games. And you're like, why are like how did you even know i exist right like you you were a developer you're whatever mm -hmm. um in the same way that works in in every other thing and uh as you meet these people you will be shocked to find out where they are you're you're worried about a swingers club i mean you are just as likely to encounter swingers in your churches uh your grocery stores everywhere else um they're pretty discreet people and we'll talk about them as if they're like animals in a, right, in a documentary right. they're they're pretty discreet people but i mean they are it is it is a place where they go away from real life to engage in this activity uh that that other people uh judge them pretty heavily for but they're everywhere it's not like it's not like there's a a, a checkbox where you're like i know that this place will have them and this place won't no the the places you expect that they're not are probably where they're most present and it's it's funny to me to see that uh after like he, i he i he's so bad at like just answering the fucking question i don't even want to finish this clip because it's like it's just him rambling it's like are you a swinger well gosh you know swingers we talk about them like they're like people like like animals like lions and like a cage going like rawr and stuff but really they could be grandma at church you'd never know you'd never know 
It's like, that's not the fucking question, bro. It's not what was fucking asked of you. Um, I don't know. I guess just doesn't want to answer. He's so busy. So busy driving around. How, how could he possibly have time to swing with all the chaperoning he has to do and all the teaching he does? Contract that are under an NDA and I can't talk about, but I've been pretty open about it sure. uh, to the extent I can where my contract is annual and then we'll talk again um, you know, probably leading up to January here, I, I would assume that talk is going to happen uh, very soon. And then we'll see where we go from there. I have no idea. Um, awesome. So I, I want to obviously continue working with them. I like them. I like the freedom that it gives. And I think that freedom is critical for creators uh, because we see what YouTube's trying to do to us on very important issues. Where's my rumble I don't contract? Disagree. Here's my question. Where's my rumble contract? I'm cheap. $200,000 exclusivity for the year. Uh, actually, I'll do, I'll be nice. I'll do $100,000. However, however, if you want the N word off the table, it's $200,000. 200, it's $100,000 to suspend the N word license, the permanent N word license that I hold uh, in my coat pocket at all times. That's how it works. Um, I'm not gonna listen to that. Anything else on this? Oh, this, this, uh, this is cringe as fuck. So, um, they're talking about a child being abused, and um, uh, I can't remember the full detail because it's it's a really really gross story. But I think it was like a a kid who was kidnapped and they were wearing diapers when they were discovered and Rikita decides to crack wise about this and there's a, a woman uh, who reacts to it live and you can see that like, she's like viscerally appalled by what he just said I'm gonna more sorry I got a Karen here I got a Karen I, I'm stylizing my hair I'm getting those frosted tips in so I can Karen farms it the fuck up right now they didn't believe a kid when she said she was in pain. They didn't. They didn't oh. help her to the. Okay. Um. I did not talk about this on stream because it's so frustrating. I'll summarize this very, um, very quickly. She. There's a girl in the UK. She has a very rare condition where she is in chronic pain. However, the condition happens to be something that's over self-diagnosed by mothers. Um, as a form of Munchausen's by proxy. So when doctors hear that there's a child that has this uh, chronic pain condition, they automatically assume that it's Munchausen's by proxy because usually it is. The, the, the incidents of Munchausen's by proxy are larger than true uh, incidents of this very rare chronic disorder. So the child comes in, the mother says it's this chronic pain disorder, the staff, this is in England, by the way, so the, the medical doctors are basically a fucking police force there. They say, no, you're crazy, your child um, is fine, you have Munchausen's by proxy, we're taking her from you, and we're going to run tests on her to prove that she is uh, fine. So she goes completely off any pain medication. She's writhing around in agony for a long time. Uh, she's wearing diapers because she's shitting herself because she's in so much pain. And uh, the the doctors like see basically steal the child from her and refuse to give her uh, let the mother even see her because they are uh, acting on the assumption that she is uh, abusive. Uh, this doesn't and apparently the woman in charge of this whole like child abduction thing is um, like infamous in the country for doing this kind of shit where she jumps in takes children and asks questions later and has been like formally reprimanded for being an insane sociopath cunt like multiple times so um eventually it goes to the courts the courts find out that she does actually have this chronic pain condition that the hospital has been misdiagnosing and mistreating her for a long time that the parents suffered uh, oh and then the mother committed suicide because she knew that her daughter was in pain and there was nothing that she could do to get her back so she killed herself and then the the court said this was completely on the fault of the hospital and this insane cunt that worked for the government um it's it's a real fucked up story i didn't want to talk about it but without giving you the backstory the the profundity of how gross this joke is will not make any sense 
They didn't believe a kid when she said she was in pain. They didn't, they didn't help her to the, they left her to sit in her own excrement because they wanted to see if she could get out of the bed and walk. Maybe she was a diaper fetishist. Well, well, Do you consider that one, Megan? Megan? Megan, there's well, there's one, there's 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 one part of the analysis. There's one part of the analysis that I think that is important to. She's doing a reboot. To, to kind of, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm saying that you're right. The jury found all these things. Professional stand-up comedian Nicholas Ricada takes his shot, and it's a, it's a mess. <laughs> That's okay. Apparently, you don't have to be funny to be a comedian. You just got to live in L.A. to be a professional comedian these days. He's taking tips from the master of the comedy dark arts. Uh, Juju the cow himself is is helping him on his way. <laughs> Hmm, it depends on the child, doesn't it? All right, sorry, I didn't want to talk about that, but it's um, it was necessary for me to make fun of uh, Juju, so I had to do it. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofer. Remember to like and subscribe.